there are a few of these albums that I have seen. This one is inscribed 15th of October 1909 and it was actually presented to William Joseph Bessel. He was a Shire councillor. He gave notice that he was going to be leaving the area and he was presented with this book which was described in the local paper as a handsome collection of local views or something like that. William Thrower had a small studio that straddled the creek in the foreground of this photo and it was only a very tiny building that really didn't extend much beyond straddling the creek. You could uh, look down between the floorboards and see the creek beneath and it was all pretty rough. Anyway, he took some fabulous photos of Walhalla. He sold his business to William Harrison Lee who was another noted Walhalla photographer. Uh, most of these photos are taken by him. There are so many photos of picnics on the Thompson River. People with a little billy and a little fire and sitting around dressed in long dresses and hats and bow ties and suits and all this, having a picnic on the, on the banks of the Thompson River. Uh, this one shows a cemetery. It's titled South Walhalla. This is a good chance to dispel the myth they are not buried standing up. They're buried horizontally. The other factor that people think about as soon as they think of the cemetery is the cursed grave. It's a grave to a chap called Mitchell and he was killed in a mine accident when he was 34 years old and the verse on his grave is pretty haunting. It just says that while you're looking at the grave the same thing could happen to you. It's a very popular item that people seek out in the cemetery. The cemetery's got 117 original monuments and they tell a a very interesting tale of the people buried there, the high mortality rate, children, and also miners who died in their prime. There was a section for pagans, Jews and paupers, quite a lot of paupers buried there. The hills around Walhalla and north of Walhalla were dotted with little huts and they often died in their huts, they didn't seek medical attention, they'd, they'd lay there for days and until somebody just chanced to find them. The thing that stands out to most people is the young children, the Gilsen and Grey for instance. There's about six children who all died you know, within a couple of years of each other. Um, young children dying from dysentery, diarrhoea, mostly intestinal diseases like that or diphtheria. The watercourse in Walhalla, the Stringers Creek, was uh, described as a common sewer. The livery stables were located over the creek. The manure just swept into it. Night pans were dumped into it. Everything was just thrown into the creek. It was just a seething mass of bacterial waste. There were outbreaks of scarlatina. Of course, it just spread rapidly. Families had large broods of children. So many men in the Walhalla Cemetery died from miners' complaint. It was uh, stripping of their lungs, working underground, drilling the fibres from the rock face were inhaled and basically over time just stripped their lungs of lining and left them with coughing blood and very tired and lethargic, yet they still worked on, many worked on for years while I was suffering from miners' complaint. Well this is a great photo of the hospital. This photo shows the washing on the line and uh, the hospital is obviously in its prime. Now the last matron at the hospital was matron Duffield and she planned for her retirement by building what we today call the matron's cottage and the local boys always used to talk and whisper about how when she went to bed at night she used to dress in a jaw strap so that if she died overnight her mouth would be open. And when they found her, sure, sure to the rumour, she was dressed in burial garb. But before there was a hospital here, when somebody died from an accident there had to be an inquest conducted and that was usually conducted in a room at a hotel. I don't think the publicans really liked the idea too much, but they had to provide that room. The steel bridge, that was actually located at a poverty point, which was a congregation of Italian woodcutters. In 1900, there were four young men boating on the river and two children from poverty point were watching and the men sidled up to the bank and asked them if they would like to join them on the craft and they did and no sooner had they got onto the little boat and paddled out and it capsized and the whole six drowned in the river none of them could swim of course the star hotel being the last hotel here of the original hotels to survive it was a hub 
of the town for a few decades until it burned down in 1951. But everything happened at the Star Hotel. That was, that was where everybody went and uh, had their favourite seat and all the rest of it. It had a um, briquette furnace and it was around Christmas and they're making Christmas puddings and the chap who owned it frugally stoked it with wood. So the story goes, instead of briquettes, wood being more available in those days and cheaper. And it, it just burst into flame and, of course, being an old weatherboard building, it was all over in a few minutes. The Long Tunnel Company incline shaft photo, it shows the miners going down the, the incline and the chap on the right-hand side with a cigarette hanging out his mouth is John Reynolds, my husband's grandfather. And he had been a miner all his life, born and bred here. When they worked underground, they worked in mud and water, often up to their knees, and they used to smear mutton fat over their legs to ins insulate their skin. And also, there's a tale, I don't know how true it is, apparently they grew moustaches. The idea of them was that when they breathed in, the dust would filter through the moustache, because they all feared miners' complaints. They knew it was a legacy of working underground. The incline shaft actually went down four and a half thousand feet, I believe. Really went right down into the bowels of the earth. Of course, the water wheel. Trekking through the bore bores, that was a very popular pastime. There's, there's lots of oral history on trips through the bore bores. Brunton's Bridge. Of course, pack horses, this is the way that brought everything into town.